The Bible says in Genesis 3, 8, God does something in this garden. It gives us a glorious, beautiful window and picture into God's primary passion for this planet and for the human beings on it. It says, God, they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Now, some of this description seems almost pointless. The word cool there in the Hebrew literally means they heard God walking in the wind. They heard him walking in the garden, and it was windy. Like, it's funny descriptions. Like, you read this, and you're like, why does it say that God was walking in the wind? The picture is clear. Guess what God still wants to do? Guess what sin has compromised God's primary passion? What is that? To walk with you. To walk with you in trivial moments like in the wind. God cares about seemingly insignificant moments of your day and insignificant moments of your life. Like it's windy. God just wants to watch the wind blow through your hair. This, this is what God desires. Notice, he wants to walk. The picture is clear. God wants to journey with you. God wants to process life with you. God wants to roll with you. Notice, he wants to be involved, not in a moment, not in a time, not during devotions, and not just on the weekend on Sunday for a 30-minute lecture. God wants to walk with you on Monday and Tuesday, and if it's windy on Wednesday, he wants to walk with you in the wind. He wants to be involved in your everyday life. This is, and the greatest the most horrible thing that sin has done to us is that it has robbed us from walking with God in the wind. It's robbed us from these moments. This is the most horrible thing sin has done. But now because of Jesus, we can be reunited to God's original intent from the beginning of time to just hang out with God. This is so exciting. Now, did you ever consider that when Jesus calls his disciples, now he's got disciples, the disciples are the 12 guys he calls, right? Probably all of, her, all of them are teenagers except Peter, and Peter acts like a teenager, right? So we've got 12 dudes, all of Jesus calls. And do you know the word that Jesus used to call these guys? You ever thought about this? I'm not here to insult your biblical intelligence for those that are familiar with Scripture. But this word that Jesus uses to call his disciples is a word used 91 times in the New Testament narrative. It's one of the key words in the entire New Testament. Jesus uses this word 16 times personally, and he used it when he called his disciples. You know what that word is? Follow. Think about it. When Jesus called his disciples, he didn't say, let's meet. He didn't say, schedule me. He didn't say, visit me. What did he say? Follow me. And in the instance of some of the guys, he called them right in the middle of their occupation. Wow, God invaded their work. Some of the fishermen are cleaning their nets. They're literally at their job, and Jesus meets them at their job and says, accompany me. The word follow assumes that God is active. God is active amongst humanity. The great thing about getting closer to God is you don't have to go far because God is already active amongst humanity. He's already active on the planet. He is near to you. You don't have to go far. You don't have to scream, yell, cut yourself, lay on the ground. God is near. God is right there. God is close to you, and you can accompany him. Jesus said, follow me. That word follow literally means Be my assistant. Be my assistant. Be by my side. Accompany me. It's an active term. It's a let's do life together. Let's roll together. Let's walk together. Let's laugh together. Let's eat together. Follow me. You know what I'm proposing as a community? That we follow Jesus. That we don't relegate God to a category We don't relegate God to a prayer time, a Bible time, a devotional time, but we give God all of our time. 
that we commit to truly follow him, to engage with him, to include him, to think about him, to acknowledge him, to talk about him. Come on, God wants to be with you tomorrow. Tomorrow, whatever you're doing, God cares about it if you care about it.